Good day, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Fabi, and welcome or welcome back to Arrows DIY. On my channel, I like to do Dollar Tree DIYs, high end dupes, thrift flips, and the occasional trash of treasure. This is another episode in my spring series, and I'm so excited to show you today three high end dupes. I came together with a close friend of mine, Brandy, from the DIY struggle, and we picked some high end dupes. I picked Magnolia and she picked some Pinterest high-end dupes. So you're definitely gonna wanna check out her video. I will leave her video link in my description box below as well as my comment box below. So here's the lovely Brandy. She's so beautiful. She makes the most beautiful DIYs, not afraid of power tools, and she's funny. So that totally, totally makes it a blast. Check out her channel in my description box below as well. So for Magnolia, I chose this frame and as you see it was $60 and I love it I, I feel like we can recreate this so that's what I did I went to my local supermarket and I bought some bright flowers they were about six dollars but if you don't want to use these flowers you can use any flowers you have or you've received you know from other people so I love dried flowers so today I'm gonna show you two techniques that I tried and I really like them. So this is the first technique. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna pick, you're gonna be very, very picky. You're gonna choose the most beautiful flowers that you want. I really like the leaves on these as well. And I just cut a good portion of the flower, including the stem. So when you're trying to choose flowers and leaves, you want to let them dry first before you start this process. You don't want any moisture in your flower. Um, I mean, excess moisture. I chose this one as well because the bulb at the bottom isn't too large. It's a little trickier when you're trying to do flowers like roses that have that large bulb in the center. All right, you're also going to want to pay attention to the direction where the petals are going. If your flower is more open, it will be easier to press your flower nicer. I'll show you some of my trials and errors along the way so that you can see, um, you know, you can learn from my mistakes. So if you're new around here, I welcome you. Um, my name is Fabi. I'm a mother of five and I DIY when I get a chance and I love DIYing. I love being creative. So I always try unique techniques and different stuff so subscribe if you like that kind of stuff all right so once I have everything laid out I also included some bulbs in there um, some closed flowers I mean and leaves and all those things so this is the first technique and this technique takes about three to five weeks to get your finished product of a pressed flower so I just took a book a big book um, and some parchment paper and I'm just gonna cut the parchment paper long enough to cover the entire span of this open book. I'm also gonna fold it in half so that the folded crease fits nicely into the center of that book. Now I took a cereal box and I just cut it and we just wanna keep the large rectangular, the two sides. This is gonna help protect our book because I, I do like this book. I would like to keep it. So I just curled the edges of that cardboard, the thin cardboard, um, so that it will protect my book in case any moisture does seep through that parchment paper in that three to five week process. So once I have it cut out, I curve the cardboard so that it follows the shape of the book and it rests nicely between the parchment paper and the textbook. So once I have this arranged, I'm just gonna go ahead and put my flowers face down on this parchment paper. Now I put them face down because the tutorials that I saw on YouTube um, recommended to put them face down, but I think through trial and error that it depends on the flower you're using. So for this method, I'm gonna check in three to five weeks and I'll let you guys know how it turned out. Um, I will totally put a picture of the final result 
in three weeks on my Instagram. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, be sure to follow me. My Instagram handle is at arrows DIY. As you can see here, I'm just placing these flowers and bulbs and leaves spaced out all over this. And I am planning to do a DIY in the future, which is why I'm patient enough to wait for this to be ready. In three weeks, I'm actually gonna be doing a Mart, um, sorry, a spring live series where I'll be crafting live every night at 8 p.m. And I am excited to use these flowers once they're pressed. So once we close the book as carefully as possible, I'm just gonna stack a whole bunch of textbooks on top of this textbook and we're just gonna wait patiently for three to five weeks so be sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to be notified when I go live I'll be crafting live with just a couple of you some of my favorite YouTube crafters so now once that's stored away safely away from children and pets I'm gonna go ahead and show you the two to three day method. Now for this method, you're gonna need a towel of some sort, any towel will do, and then I'm going to cut some more parchment paper. Now the online tutorials that I saw told me to face them down. And this is one of my fails. So I'm gonna show you what happens when you are too rough and when you keep the stem connected to the flower. So, Basically, don't do this, what I'm doing. You do want to put the flower between two parchment paper. You also want to have your iron on a low setting, and you're going to press them for two to three minutes at a time without turning on the steam option or the spray. You want it to be as dry as possible. Now, this is gonna kickstart the, the drying process for your flower. And like I said before, you want to be gentle. So. I was not gentle enough and this is what happened so I'm gonna try again so if you mess up you know like DIY sometimes you got to just keep trying different things so that's what I do now so now I decided let me try by cutting off the flower away from the stem so I go ahead and I gently place this I want it to open up so I kind of convince this little flower to open up face down and we're gonna try again with a new piece of parchment paper. So I'm gonna go ahead and press it gently this time on a low setting for two minutes. And you can press it again and again, but you just want two minute intervals of heat. So as you can see here, the face down method wasn't really working, although the stem turned out pretty good. When you press them, they do get warm and you can see that it's going to dry better. So now I'm trying, this one turned out fantastic. This was my, I was so happy when this one was uh, was pressed. So facing, facing up and gently, I'm going to press it one more time. And I'm going to show you what it looks like after two minutes of pressing. And when you peel back your parchment, you wanna fold the parchment. You don't want to touch the flower. And look how it turned out, isn't that beautiful? So this is gonna be the center stage on my DIY. It's my favorite flower. I was so happy I had to share it with a friend. <laughs> I really hope you do try this method. It only takes two to three days. And that was totally possible for me to get this video out to you guys. I'll also link the other two tutorials in the description box below in case you guys wanna check those out because this works for many different types of flowers. So as you can see here, I wanted the flowers to be dried in different orientations. So I folded some in half and I used, as you saw before, I pressed some florals and I also pressed some of the bulbs just to make it look more natural and I really like how it's turning out. And remember, you want to fold the parchment paper when dis detaching it from the flower very gently. 
This would work really well for weeds as well. Weeds look beautiful when they're pressed and dried. And it's important for them to be fully dried so that they don't mold between the two glasses in your frame if they're not fully dry. So we're gonna press these. This is the, this is the last flower I'm gonna show you that I press. And then we're going to keep these flowers between the two parchment papers. We're gonna dry them for two to three days in the same configuration between the two parchment paper. And just keep them somewhere safe, away from children or animals while they're drying for the two days. And when they're fully dry, they should feel like paper. So they're very fragile once they're, vi once they're very dry. And as you can see, I just continue um, pressing the flower with the iron on a low setting. And it's okay if a little bit of that middle of the flower um, comes out, that's fine. And this is a good activity to do with children as well. My daughter loved this activity. And of course, with parental supervision, um, you know, take all the precautions when you're using an iron, please be safe and just let this air dry for two to three days inside the parchment paper, undisturbed. And yeah, I love how it turned out. So now I'm gonna take two of these frames from the Dollar Tree. I wanted to use the 11 by seven frame, but they didn't have it in stock and I didn't have any on hand. So I'm just gonna use this frame and it's totally fine. You're gonna need, you're gonna need two of these frames from Dollar Tree. So I just started off by removing all of the plastic and disassembling them. So I'm gonna take the back cover off and we're only gonna keep the glass from these two frames. So this is what it looks like when they are fully dry after the two days. As you can see, they lose some of their color, which is why I chose very bright colors. I didn't want them to be um, fully you know opaque i did want them to have a strong color so this is why i chose these bright colors in my flowers today now you want to gently remove them i'm not even sure if you could grab it by a petal it's very fragile and we're just going to transfer them on to the frame but isn't that so beautiful i just i love those colors this is my favorite diy so far i think it might be my favorite diy of all time if i dare say so Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and just place them wherever I think they might look nice, where they might look interesting, and I'm going to put the stems, since they're separated, I'm just going to place them where they should be. So that's what they look like once everything's arranged and assembled. I like how they're, they remind me of wildflowers, and this DIY can easily be used all throughout the year. You could use these um, for fall because of the colors. They're perfect for spring and summer as well. So if you do give this a try, please let me know and tag me on Instagram or just email me at arrowsdiy at gmail. I would love to see your take of this project. So now I'm just gonna add hot glue into the corners and you wanna add a little tiny bit of glue, not too much because it will show through. They will, it will seep through the edges. So I think I went a little heavy handed. If I redo this DIY, I would only put the hot glue in the corners because it's just gonna hold the glass in place. And then you're gonna add the other glass on top of this. And then you're gonna close the clasps that are on that frame. And be careful because this glass is very fragile. So you do not want to press too hard. You wanna slowly bring down these, these clasps. Now on the other frame, I've removed the, the clasps because I don't want them to show. So I fully remove them off camera. Um, you can use whatever you want to do that, but be careful because I mean, it's Dollar Tree stuff, right? So we want to be mindful and careful. Now I'm going to use some of this nautical rope also from the Dollar Tree. And if you noticed in the inspiration picture from Magnolia, there was a very long hanger. And I love the rustic feel of that hanger. So I'm gonna unwind this nautical rope and I'm going to make one big chunky knot with the two, with two of these um, 
I'm going to keep I'm going to keep two of these wound up and just keep one of those strands from the nautical rope. I'm going to keep one of those strands loose. That way we can hang our piece with that one loose strand. You'll see what I'm saying. So basically just make a knot but keep that one strand loose. So with this one strand that's loose now, we're gonna hot glue it um, so that it doesn't look sloppy. We're gonna hot glue that into the um, inside of the frame in a second. Now I want it to be very secure because it's a glass and I really don't want this to come crashing down off the wall. So we're just gonna hot glue the one strand there and we're gonna squeeze it in between that corner. There's a little gap between the frame and the glass. So that's where this one little line is, one little um, strand, sorry. That one little strand is gonna go right snug in that little corner there. And it is better if that loose strand is about two of those little nautical rope mini strands because <laughs> basically it's a whole bunch of strands that make each strand anyways hopefully you can see what I'm saying I'm just going to hot glue them with tons of hot glue in the corner now uh, once those are secure in place I'm going to go ahead and hot glue the entire frame one frame on top of the other frame that way it looks finished and as well it looks close to the inspiration piece. Now I use Gorilla Hot Glue because that's the hot glue that I love. So I'm just, in case you're curious what I use, I use Gorilla Hot Glue and it's never let me down so far. So I um, go ahead and I secure those together. And this is how it looks once it's hung on my wall. And I absolutely love this DIY. I hope you guys do give it a try. Um, but let me know in the comments below what you think about it because I really love to hear from you guys. All right, so now for the next project, I'm going to be trying to make this. Um, I think it's beautiful, but I haven't gone to the thrift store in a long time. So I'm going to go ahead and try this with this cheese ball container. <laughs> yes. Now you feel free to use any vase jug. You can use a pickle jar. Actually, I used the pickle jar in my last video. I can link that video right here if you're interested to see what I did in my last dried flower DIY for Valentine's Day. I um, decorated this pickle jar full of my wedding flowers, which I dried also. I think I have a thing for dried flowers. Anyways, now I took this um, rope from the Dollar Tree. It's like a cotton nautical rope, I think. And okay, I just hot glued it around the lid, um, the up, the rim of this container. I just wanted to give it some more shape to the top of the vase, and I also wanted to add something interesting to the eye. So that's why I added this on there. I know it's not the same as the Magnolia Inspiration piece, but it's my DIY. So if you don't like this, I mean. You can do whatever you like, right, with your project. This is just to show you what it looks like if you do try this. All right, so since this is plastic, I'm gonna add a thin coat of matte, matte Mod Podge. You can use any Mod Podge um, as long as it's a thin coat. That way it dries faster and we can get this done faster. So this Mod Podge is available at Dollar Tree. That's where I got this one, given it's in stock, of course. Now I'm going to use this Folk Art 1 Decor Paint in the color Farmhouse White. I figured it'd be perfect and um, I've been dying to try this color. So I'm going to go ahead and try this in the eggshell finish to give it a ceramic feel. So I go ahead and I give this a good coat once the Mod Podge is fully dry. Now I always, um, I try to paint everything in the same direction so that way it looks a little neater. So you'll see in a second that I just take time to make sure that all of the lines are nice and neat. I don't know if that's, I'm not very OCD, but I guess I just like all the lines 
going in the same direction. That way it looks neat. Once I painted the entire container, I go ahead and I just hot glue any pieces that are sticking out of that nautical rope on top and then I give that a coat of white as well. So now I have these napkins that I got at Amazon. I'll leave the link in the description box below. I don't have an Amazon store. I have no idea how to do that yet. So one day I will um, provide you guys with an Amazon store link, but not today. All right, so this is what I'm looking at. And I, I found this napkin and I thought it looked so similar to the Magnolia piece, right? Okay, so I love this napkin. I'm gonna put it on everything that I can think of because I love this napkin. Oh my goodness, it's so timeless. You, I mean, you can leave this up all year around and it will look gorgeous with any floral, no floral. I'm gonna put this on the top of my cabinets in my kitchen. But anyways, as you see there, I cut off the border because we don't need the lines. We only need the flowers. And then once I cut off that border, I'm going to um, separate the plies so that we only have that one thin ply. This is very important to make sure your napkin has one ply. I find it easiest to separate the plies after you cut off the border. Okay. So once we have that all cut out, I cut out around the flowers as you saw, and now I'm just going to add some Mod Podge. I'm adding the dishwasher safe Mod Podge because as I said, I'm gonna be using this in my kitchen and I do wanna be able to wipe this off if it gets dusty up there or if it gets, you know, it's a kitchen. So sometimes, you know, it gets greasy. So you just gotta make sure to clean it up. But this Mod Podge in the dishwasher safe, um, version it's really good for that so i'm just going to go ahead and use that to mod podge it on i'm just showing um i do speed up some of the process but i do show you in a little bit slow down how you can um mod podge but um sorry decoupage with the mod podge and i am a plaid ambassador so um i you know i recommend their products because i really do use them and i love them they uh, plaid does the waverly paint they do the folk art line and i really just enjoy using their products so fun fact about me all right so now i'm just going to uh slowly add a little tiny bit you want a thin even layer and then you're just going to slowly attach the top of your napkin and gently tap it with your finger making sure that your finger is clean if you have some mod podge on your finger the napkin might get stuck to your finger and destroy your project. I, okay, not destroy your project because I think this is a rustic piece. So even if you do pull up a little bit of your napkin, it's totally fine. I mean, it'll look more aged, more distinguished. It'll be great. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you, this is the process where I slow it down so you can see how I Mod Podge. I cut off that corner, it was a little too sharp for my liking. I, I want all the corners to be nice and soft so then starting from the top i already added a thin layer of mod podge and i am just going to slowly um rub it tap it sorry not rub it tap it we're gonna slowly tap it down starting at the top and the bottom has no mod podge on there yet so it's very easy to control the napkin it's not like the whole thing is just gonna stick on to the container so we're just gonna slowly i would say inch by inch add Mod Podge. If you're a beginner, inch by inch is the best way. Um, and I didn't mind if I get wrinkles in it, but if you don't want wrinkles, you definitely want to do this as slow as possible, making sure that you are tapping down um, from the top to the bottom. Now, if you see there, I pulled it a little too much after it was wet with Mod Podge. So it did rip. But guess what? It's totally fine. You could just keep going because that's the fun of DIY. I mean, you're just creating something from something that would have been in a landfill, you know? I mean, I am using a container here. So, I mean, I just enjoy the process and um, I don't really focus so much on perfection because handmade items should be a little bit not perfect, you know? I mean, I don't know. That's just what I think. Let me know what you think in the comment box below. But I love 
handmade um, items because of those little quirks. It just makes it more charming for me, in my opinion. Okay, so you see there how I put this down. And when I was placing these pieces, I tried to put different pieces together. So some of the flowers have the birds on it. And then the next piece next to that piece will only have the florals. And I just alternate that way just so that there's a variety in the pieces. It just looks more natural that way if it's not the same exact repetitive flower next to each other. All right, so then I just continue um, all around this jug and I've sped it up because I think by now you guys <laughs> understand what I'm doing. I'm just showing you the placement and where I put these pieces of napkin in case you wanna try it yourself. So this is the other side of the container and on this side I put the piece of napkin with the birds at the bottom and when I get to the bottom edge I add some more Mod Podge on top. I sealed the entire napkin with Mod Podge on top after it's adhered and then I just kind of add Mod Podge to the edge of the jug and slowly remove the um, napkin. I don't cut it um, I just do it that way. It just seems more natural, in my opinion, than a sharp edge. Um, but you do, you know, you do you. All right, so now I'm gonna add um, the other little bit I just took off of napkin, because I don't wanna waste that, I'm cheap. All right, so now I'm gonna add, use this antiquing wax, which I love. Don't judge the bottle, I really love this stuff, okay? So if you don't have some of this, get some of this, because this is awesome. I love this antiquing wax. Okay, now I'm just going to add a heavy coat of um, the antiquing wax to the top of this rope. And I just want it to feel kind of ceramic-like, so I painted it white first so that you can see the full effect of the antiquing wax. All right, so I go ahead and I do the whole um, top rim of the jug as well as the inside because you never really know the angle you're going to be seeing the jug from. So I think it is important to do the inner lip. You know what I mean? I don't know. Okay, so that's what I do. And um, I also got my hand really, really, really dirty because I mean that's at this point I'm known for paint all over my hands and I'm not sure if that's something good to be known for but it's true I just I, I'm a messy crafter so um, pardon my hands but I'm gonna use this very interesting technique now once I um, rub it into the corner you see that little edge under the rope I kind of rubbed it in there so I randomly distressed all over and now my hand as you can see it's messy I'm gonna use my hand and I'm gonna press the antiquing wax randomly all around this that way it kind of gives me a random distressing I don't have to think about you know random placement I just did that so <laughs> That's what I did. That's how I distressed this piece. Okay, so once that's still wet, the antiquing wax is still gonna be wet, I'm going to make another mixture. So I took some more Mod Podge and a drop of that farmhouse white color and I mixed it together. So now I'm going to seal the entire project with this. It's very important that you mix it very, very, very well. Very well so that you don't see any streaks across your project. And I'm just gonna steal this entire thing with this Mod Podge mixed with this white color so that it all looks like one solid piece and it kind of blends the color of the napkin with the background white color. This will also spread out that antiquing wax that we just pressed on there. So this is how it's looking for now. You can go heavy with your distressing if you like a lot of distressing. I just wanted this piece to have a light distressing. Um, I just like that. I also would have added gold because I love gold, 
but I just left it as is just because it is kind of a high-end dupe higher high-end inspired you let me know what you think about this in the comments below but I had a lot of fun making this I hope you give it a try all right so we're on our last project and I'm gonna make these wood beads I mean well no they're not wood beads they're a high-end dupe from Dollar Tree supplies so I'm gonna be using this table tennis um, balls I made a DIY like this last year um, in my coastal video I can link that video up above if you're interested in coastal decor but um, I'm just gonna use my glue gun and make little holes on both sides of this to make sure that your holes are exactly in the right point you're going to follow the line if you look at this ball close up you'll see that there's a line that goes across that goes all around this ball and that line is what's going to keep your lines sorry your holes lined up so that we are able to thread it later on um, in my other video I kind of explained this technique a little better um, but I think you can see what I'm saying here I'm just putting using my glue gun to burn two holes and I do rub the glue gun tip I kind of um, move it around in circles to make that hole bigger because we're gonna feed a twine through it and we know that twine sometimes the Dollar Tree twine is wild so there's some bits that are thicker and some bits that are thinner and it's very important to have a big opening so that uh, the twine doesn't get snaggled all right so once all of them have that hole I'm gonna go ahead and use this this was an old floral pick I took all the flowers off of this and it's from the Dollar Tree so I'm just gonna use this to hold all my beads as I paint them white and like last time um, I'm going to make sure that all of my paint strokes are in one direction it's gonna help us create a wood effect so these are the beads I had left over from my lap from last year I didn't use all my beads and you have to be careful because it is plastic I mean they're tennis balls so if you see that you press it too hard you can always use a toothpick and just pop it right back out but this is a good technique if you want to get the high-end look on a budget because the magnolia ones are about twenty dollars and this one is about four dollars so you know four dollars I mean it's a big difference so just an idea I hope you got an idea today in this video and uh, you're inspired so now I made another paint color and I mixed some of that white color it's a white acrylic paint in the color wicker, wicker white I'm mixing that color with a drop of antiquing wax to make kind of like a light brown and this is going to be the base color of our wood beads it's very important to keep your streaks sorry to keep your strokes um, in one direction so that it does look neat and more like wood now I'm gonna take the same paintbrush and I'm gonna dab it the corner as well as the middle with a little tiny bit of that antiquing wax and I'm just going to stroke it to make a nice streak in one direction and my white paint is still wet when I'm doing this and it kind of helps with the blending of the antiquing wax so I don't want all of these beads to be um, the same color I want very different beads I don't want the beads to be exactly the same so I do very different things to every bead and it's a lot of fun you know you don't have to worry so much on um, and you can also build up so this is the first go this is my first um, round of antiquing wax and I'm just gonna show you here how I keep everything in one direction going from the top of the bead towards the bottom of the bead and some of them have a little tiny bit of antiquing wax and others have a lot very heavy and you'll see in a second what I mean so I just go ahead and these are the ones that get a little heavier with the antiquing wax 
and I don't want them perfect at all. I want them to look very random, just rustic in nature. So I'm just showing you here what I did. Some of them are heavier than others. So as you can see here, I just go back and forth with the paintbrush. It's very simple, kind of messy. You might want to wear gloves. I don't like wearing gloves, so I'd rather make a mess and then just wash my hands. But that's what it looks like once it's fully done. Faux wood. And the good thing is this is not expensive, so you can make it super as long as you want. I only use about 20 of these balls, but you could totally use as, as many as you like. I'm gonna use this on my tear tray display, so I don't need it to be that long. But if it's your project, do whatever you want. Now, if you have a little notch in your ball, like if you pressed it and you can't fix it, just put more antiquing wax in that hole and it'll, it'll look like a knot in the wood. So, you know, you just work with what you got and I'm sure it's gonna come out great. It's a lot of fun to make. So as you can see here on these balls, I'm going heavy heavy with the antiquing wax and I only do that for um, I think three of the balls and I did use a, I had a base coat of gray on there from my last um, garland so it's also helpful to add some Mod Podge first to the um, to the plastic ball if you're using a different kind of paint that is not folk art or whatever um, all right, so now I took some more of this nautical rope and I'm gonna uh, unwind it completely. And I'm also gonna cut it. So I cut it to about a length of 24 inches in case I needed the full length. Cause you just never know with twine. So that way I had more of an option on what end to cut if I didn't like a certain section of the twine. All right, so we're gonna un wind this entire um, nautical rope. Once it's all um, separated, we're also going to separate that strand that we just separated. As you can see, it has like five strands within that one strand. So we're going to take one of those strands out. So we're getting down to the basics of this nautical rope. And this took way longer than I'm showing you right now. This was one of those moments where I was like, why? But the end result is totally worth it. I completely love how this came out. I made another garland last year, but it's different than this one because this one has those knots between every single bead. And that's really what I liked about this specific um, magnolia piece. I love magnolia pieces. I have so I've done other magnolia dupes. I can totally link those at the end of this video if you guys want to check out more of my magnolia dupes. But you know, if you don't want to pay the price tag, then it is going to take a little bit more elbow grease, you know. But I like to customize my projects. I like picking my color and all that stuff. All right. So now I'm using one of these. Um, hair weaving needles from the Dollar Tree in the hair section. You can get one of those thick needles. Now I'm going to use that and I'm going to feed the twine through the little eye of the needle. And I'm just going to use this little needle to string them on. And I'm going to string them on very randomly. As you can see, I didn't even make a knot. The twine is so thick at this point that it just stays on without a knot. And I didn't want to add a knot because I didn't want the um, I didn't want anything stopping the bead from being threaded on. So I didn't want anything in the way. So I didn't knot the the twine. And I'm just gonna string them on, as you can see. It doesn't really matter if there isn't paint right where the hole is, because we're gonna cover that in just a second. So as you can see, I'm just randomly um, adding the beads. I just feel like it's more natural that way. And once they're all strung on, we're gonna move on to the next step, which is the detail between each bead. Now we're gonna take three strands of the nautical rope, like the really, 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 really 
thin strands and we're going to take three of those and we're going to run it under the garland and we're just going to tie a knot between every single bead it's very simple but i think it's a very big impact it takes this from a regular garland to a high-end looking garland so as you can see here um i'm just doing just that it's very simple to do i always secure my twine with hot glue because twine i don't trust twine i mean it just it kind of has a mind of its own so i always add a little dot of hot glue where the twine intersects like that middle section there i always add a bead of, of hot glue to it once you add the little tiny bead of hot glue you know where no one will notice you're going to cut both ends so that you're only left with that knot between every single one and the cool thing about this is you could still slide the knot up and down the garland so that is super cool as well to me and it totally looks way more high-end in my opinion okay so i go ahead and i do this for every single space between the two beads and it's very simple if i can do this you could totally do this so I do hope you give it a try. Now I'm not going to show you every single knot between every single bead, but I did want to show you how I got it done. So once those three are arranged, I go ahead and do the same thing for the full length of the garland. Full, once the garland is done with all the beads strung on there, now we're going to take some nautical rope and we're going to keep it wound. So now you're going to measure about 8 inches, 8 to 10 inches, and you're going to make a knot with a loop inside the knot. And I just wanted to make sure that... Um, my hand fit inside of it just as reference if you want to know how big the string was before the knot um, but that's what it looks like very simple just a regular knot pull it really taut and then we're also going to add hot glue because that's what we always do with any rope of any twine So now we're just going to cut off that loop and once that loop is fully cut off we are going to sew we're gonna sew this we're gonna we're gonna sew the um i know honey i know sorry we're gonna sew this knot carefully um we're gonna attach it to the end with the needle there's an end there that has a needle and we're just gonna attach that to that so once that's attached, we pulled the needle through that little knot there. We're just going to wrap the twine around that bead and we're just going to knot it off. And that's going to be one end of our garland. This helps it look just like the inspiration piece. And we're going to secure it with a bit of hot glue as well. Now for the other end, I just decided to keep it very simple and I just made another knot with the three strands of twine from the nautical rope just like we did in between the beads and that's how it turned out i totally love this diy i am looking forward to using it all year round i hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did please don't forget to give me a thumbs up subscribe if you want to see more of what i made in this house and a special thank you to brandy from the diy struggle for teaming up with me um, to bring you guys some high-end dupes. So don't forget to check out Brandy's channel. It is in the description box below as well in my, as in my comment box. So um, yeah, check her out. I'm telling you, you will not be disappointed. Now, I want to say thank you so much to my loyal subscribers, my new subscribers. Guys, you mean the world to me. So thank you so much for all your comments 
and your support. It really does mean the world to me and it brightens up my day. So take care, God bless, and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye. If you like this video, here are some other videos that you might enjoy.